All right, welcome back. Hope you're having a good day. We're gonna go ahead and call this Seedling Saturday. Even though I doubt I get this video edited and published today, but it's Saturday and I'm messing with seedlings, so we'll call it Seedling Saturday here. Uh, I'm gonna start off with my acacia. A couple things that I just wanna talk about before I get started here is first off, this thing I've been using pretty well. This is just a, this came with a little seed starting kit and it had the, the little peat pots that uh, rot away. I've used those pots for my moringa and some other things, but uh, I've actually used a couple of them for my acacia and I planted them in the ground and boy, those things really, really took off. But the uh, other thing I wanted to point out is sometimes when I make videos about my smaller trees, I get some messages about what I need to do is get them in a really, really big pot to make them really, really big and everything. And honestly, when I started the hobby, I was kind of broke. And one of the even purposes of me doing the channel was I was going to kind of work with uh, material that you know, you could just start on your own. And you know, now, I mean, I've, I've kind of gotten to where I'm not quite as broken. I'm more willing to spend as much more money, but at the same time, I want to kind of take some of these things that I started like this and actually work them like that. I don't really want to put it in the ground and just let it go forever. I actually dug one of the ones that I had in the, one of those starter pots in the ground and moved it to my front yard and just put it in the ground up there. I'm going to let that one take off. Just want to kind of keep them small, repot them every few years, in smaller pots, try to keep control of them, maybe uh, down to scale. If it fails, I mean, the only thing I've even used it for this is my old used pots. I used pretty much uh, used bonsai substrate, although some of these ones that I did repot, I did use some uh, better stuff in. But anyhow, I'm just going to go ahead and address one of the, each one of these individually. I have wire on some of them. Some of the wire looks like it really needs to come off. Some of the wire I actually, you know, wrapped up very carefully trying to make it a little loose so I could leave it on a little longer, but I do need to shorten them all down a little bit. It's uh, today's actually, I think the first day of summer or the second, third day of summer, something like that. The days are long and we just, uh, a couple weeks ago, we had a bunch of rain, which gave it a bunch of gro new growth up high here, not a lot down low. And then I noticed, you know, because they're in such small spots by the afternoon, these things are kind of looking wilted up and sad. So again, since I'm keeping them in small pots, I'm going to go ahead and just trim them on down. There may be a couple in here that I decide to go ahead and repot into some bigger ones and I'll hold on to them to the end because I'm going to do the same thing to a couple star fruit trees. But anyhow, let's go ahead and get rolling here. All right, you may notice no wire on this one. So this is actually basically what they would look like if you just planted them and did nothing with them. See lots of new growth coming out on the end here. And I don't know if you can see the difference in the line growth here, line green growth compared to the older growth down here. But this one up here actually has three branches growing off of it. Sure do wish that was a little bit shorter. But anyhow, these two branch down down here and there is active leaves here and active leaves here. Wish they were across from each other. But at the same time, I'm just gonna take it right on down to that. Man, those thorns. And then we got this guy here. As just barely see the ends there, they're gonna get ready to get chopped down here in a minute anyway. See this one has plenty of roots coming out of the bottom of it. Now this one does not have buds as low. Some of these I may even wait to repot after I see whether or not they survive the chop or not. There is a leaf right here, and so I'm gonna cut right above that. And then just to keep it uniform, even though there's no leaves on this side until way up here, I'm just going to go down about the same height. Just go between two thorns there. And we'll see what happens there. This one, very little roots coming out of the bottom. This is one of the ones I think I repotted the last time I updated these. I don't think I want to replace that wire. You can see I even left that off. I had the whole thing wound up. And I think what I did, I'd have to go back and watch the entire video, but I think what I did is I unwound it, wound it back the other way, and then just didn't go all the way down the trunk, probably partially because of the thorns, but who knows in my case, sometimes I have some weird reasons for things I do. This branch is kind of in the middle of a uh, the curve there, and I don't have the wire on that one. I actually think I'm gonna take that one off. The wire stops here. This movement's already been made, and so I'm just gonna shorten that one up. 
this is a branch coming off of that branch that's wired and it's actually nice and lateral not going straight up or anything like that so I'm going to leave a couple leaves on it try to make sure that continues to back bud from there this one looks like I might have there's a chop there I might have actually done that at some point because sometimes these are actually in some spots or I'm actually walking by, or it might have been growing into another tree. But I'm going to go just a little bit below that again. And that should back butt out no problem. I'll have to keep an eye on that wire for the rest of this uh, summer. This guy also has a little thin layer of roots coming there. Again, that might go on the need to repot this pot's kind of falling apart some too so I may actually do this one today instead of waiting like I might on that other one this one comes up again no wire but it does come up and it has three branches on it and all three of these except for maybe this one even though that one's the strongest one have some branching down low of course this one actually has two branches coming off of it I think I'm gonna to try to save both of those and then just come down to about the same height on these. There's a sub branch on this one too. I don't know if I'm too worried about that one. It's nice and short. And then even though this one has a really small leaf there, I'm gonna come up to the just the next set. All right, and I'm not sure if I turn the camera, I just gave myself a little break. I don't know if I pulled this one out before I turned the camera off or not. But I did notice when I had the camera off there for a second that the wire is bite again just a little bit. And so I took it off and then the wire did stop right about here where this set of leaves is right here. And then there's two branches coming off from that. But again, super tall. Not really wanting to keep them this tall. So I'm hoping there's a lot of buds and active buds in through here, so I'm hoping maybe I can build some lateral branching just off of that movement there. Should make for a decent tree. And then the last in this group is this one. Got some good, definitely good height to it. And this is two branches. You can see that the main branch is kind of running this way. That's where most of the thickness is. But just below where these two fork off are actually two good branches there. And so I think this one will turn out really nice. I'm just going to go ahead and take off those parts and leave both those branches there. Both those branches have plenty of current leaves on them. So I don't even have to count on a back budding or anything. And this does have some roots coming out. All right, and that's the end of that first group that I brought in. Now I've got the second group here. This group, with the exception of this one, were all repotted. That last upset update I did, which I do believe was towards the end of last summer. Uh, this one I was repotted at that one, but this one was actually kind of a little sickly looking. I think I might even remember mentioning something in the video that I doubt it survived. I actually kept it separate from the rest of them just because I wanted to baby it. And sure enough, it, it did survive and it's been doing fine. This, I mean, it's got a kind of a main branch going here. These two branches coming off of it, and now there's a third kind of coming out there. And then this one here, when I first looked at it, I was thinking I'd go ahead and cut that off there, get rid of uh, that chop mark, but then of course I'd have like another chop mark next to it and build something off this one with that movement. But I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take this down to one of the last nodes and hope that bat buds but then also I'm going to take these down to just a couple notes up from where they're at now and you know when I first did repot it it's a little short on substrate in there even a bunch of the root ball was exposed I think it's it was one of the ones that might have gotten knocked over and I had to change the angle so much I wasn't sure it would survive like an angle change move like that and it did all right this one here the, uh, most of these that I did repot, I did prune them back probably a little bit harder than the other group when I repotted them. And now this one only has one really tall branch, 
but then it's got several branches kind of coming out down there take a look at this and I'll come up like maybe one node on that branch you can actually even see where I chopped it right here and it's getting a new sprout out of that leader there I think I'll leave that one alone it's gonna give it a lot of momentum there but these other two I'm gonna take down to maybe a node or two up from where they split from the main trunk and just see what happens from there this one with no wire I'm gonna guess that it's been forced to grow this way probably by whatever kind of neighbor I've got it sitting next to just kind of coming out that way and looking for some light up there I think I'm going to go ahead and shorten this guy down quite a bit and I'm going to do that and that I did kind of have plans on getting pretty brutal with a couple of these this one actually still has a growing tip but it is the smallest branch out of all the ones I just cut and since it looks nice and healthy and some good soil in this training pot here and everything cut it like that and try to allow it to build some taper you know I probably should have looked at it and said something right when I first started but these trees are a year and two months old and I have been mistaken saying that at the end of last summer that I did an update on them it was actually in December I did a video on me making them and then I did a video oh there's a uh, Sri Lankan weevil there I'm gonna crush that guy and throw him away now, if you look that up Maybe I mightn't include a picture. It's a very exotic bug, and I guess no systemic works on it at all. And uh, when I see them, I just actually squish them with my fingernails and wash my hands before I eat something. Uh, but anyhow, uh, I took a little break there real quick to look at the wire on this tree and the other one. It is very hard for me to even see whether it's biting in or not without actually taking it off. And I think I want to go ahead and leave these two on. If I get a little wire bite, I get a little wire bite. I can see in some spots where I have like a little bit of an air gap in there. Remember I used a little bit thicker wire and tried to leave a little gaps in here and there and get the movement in there and let the tree give the tree say something to grow into. But I don't want to I don't want to take it off just yet. If it bites some, it bites some. They're still very young trees. I'm not really trying to show them or anything. I'm just having a little fun anyhow. So what the hell? But I got this first dramatic bend in it right here. You'll see it a little bit better from that way. Dramatic bend in right there, and it's got that shoot coming right out of the top, just trying to become the new leader. So take that guy out, and then another little straight escapee here, and I'll take that guy out, and then the rest of it here. I think I will just go ahead. I thought about just leaving the height here. I am just going to take these back. left live, note, live nodes on both of those branches there so the wire stops right here I'm gonna guess that sprouted after I got the wire on there and then this did take a little turn that way too and that's actually from where I chopped it right there and then basically the same thing with this guy here as far as the the wire biting in goes and everything really hard for me to tell and at this point I don't really care all that much so I'm just gonna let it bite in a little more and again a little sprout coming straight up there thought about actually maybe taking the wire off and uh, chopping it back to there but then I almost have just a typical S curve uh, then these guys goes into three branches up here and you guys can see the three there and so I'm actually just gonna go two three nodes out and just cut all those back and that should branch out very nicely. If I notice sometimes after I do the prune like this, I'll see these guys will look, you know, even uh, before doing all this in the afternoon, these guys will look really, really sad. Their leaves all closed up and half dead looking. And then uh, in the morning, they'll just all be bright, you know, bright again, leaves wide open, looking beautiful. What I'll do is I'll just keep an eye on this, and like I said, sometimes after a prune like this, these will just have really healthy looking leaves in the morning, sad in the afternoon, healthy in the morning, sad in the afternoon, and then sometimes they'll go through a growth spurt too. If this goes through a huge growth spurt, I'll probably have to cut that wire off pretty quickly. Same thing with that last one.
All right, and just keeping up with the Seedling Saturday theme. Uh, last year, I was at a botanical gardens and they had a Pride of Barbados tree and another one right next to it. They shared the same scientific name to begin with and there was a seed pod laying between them. I, I really can't pronounce the scientific name. Maybe I'll put it on the screen now or something while I'm talking here. But uh, not sure which one the seed pod came from. This is either a Pride of Barbados or related to it. And I guess, I think, I've asked a few people and uh, I guess there really is no way to know until it blooms. Uh, I've got uh, two that got about this big and then there's a couple more that I started in. Uh, this one I actually ripped a sickly tree out of and just kind of like left the better one in there. And then the, uh, the other ones I, I put in much smaller pots so obviously they're not growing quite as much as this. I'll probably go ahead and repot them soon enough but I just wanted to kind of show off a, a good one. I got two like this. All right, and I've also got five star fruit trees. I was going to show all of them off, but uh, one I'm going to repot at the end with the other acacia that I'm going to repot. And then two of them are just kind of covered in scale. Uh, kind of hard to explain, but I've actually figured out that there does seem to be a problem with the star fruit trees with a really smaller scale that is not like the wax scale I'm used to seeing. Wax scale I'm used to seeing is maybe half the size of a pinky nail or something. I guess I do get some scale that's a little lot smaller than that, but this is like really small white dots just all over them, but anyway, I'll, I'll deal with them separately. Uh, this one, it's funny, I've actually had to have both these other two trees quarantined at one point, because I quarantined this one, it was covered with it. I had the I had wire on this part here, putting that movement in there, and it seemed as if the wire almost caused the scale, and so I took all that wire off, actually threw that wire out, and then I used kind of a guide wire to just hold it together like this for a bit, and just tried to pay attention to it and scrape that scale off. Seems to be pretty good now. Uh, it is getting, a little, little, uh, you know, top heavy-ish with the wind out there. A terracotta pot. It's, you know, pretty good heavy pot, but at the same time, don't really like things out there blowing around that much. And I don't think I'm gonna get any fruit off of this year or anything. So I'm gonna cut it just kind of down for just stability and taper, if you will. Should allow it to build a little taper up and just kind of keep it a little more stable in the pot as well. And then uh, I have been cutting off any of the. Uh, any sprouts that come straight down or anything like that. This one's coming off the side. This one's also coming off the side there. So I think those will be a little bit better for it. And then this one too, I, think I really haven't done much to it. And it does have these two, well this one's especially straight, but then also this one. And I don't really know what size pot I had this in before, but it's actually, this one is actually building up some taper pretty well and got a nice woody trunk just like that other one does. And then let's see, this one's kind of coming straight off, but what would be the trunk? And if it continues to build itself off of these two here, I may wire those apart a little bit, but we'll just let that grow for a little bit and see how that works out. All right, something else I should have mentioned right when I started with the star fruit here is these are about two and a half years old. I do believe this November is when uh, these guys will be three when I got the fruit from somebody I work with. This one, I uh, got a little decent movement there at the beginning. I uh, got that straight shoot, which I'm probably going to take off right now. Then these two branches, which I'd probably leave them both if I was not going to repot it. But I'm going to repot this. This pot is just full of all kinds of uh, moss and just heavy stuff. And also, I kind of want to just get it out of this thing here. Or I might even plant it a little bit lower in here, just depending on what my... Uh, I have it planted up to about here. And this type of pot with these little drain holes on the bottom like this, if you have anything top heavy in there, it'll just kind of keep going over. And I do have this in some regular potting soil, so maybe if I did plant it a little bit lower, with some better substrate, it'd be heavy enough to kind of hold it down. Uh, but it's been getting knocked over a bunch. And you can see here that it doesn't just have the growth out of the top. It's getting some back budding there too. So growing well, but just going to kind of stum it off for now. And then I'm just going to go ahead and get my repotting system set up here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start with a star fruit tree. 
Uh, if I was, if it was a little earlier in the spring, I may go ahead and just try to get really rough with it, like kind of work the Nabari a little bit. But it's still a very young tree, and it's really hot out right now, and so I don't want it to be starving for water too much. You know, I don't want to, you know, lose too many roots here, so I am just going to kind of be, you know, I'll say semi-gentle. I see no good substrate in there at all. See, it's got, uh, that's a moss just growing on the top. Thought it would have a little more roots than it's got. And like I said, I don't want to get too rough with it. Take the weeds and the moss off the top. It's amazing how, before starting in this hobby, I would always think everything should grow in black soil like this. And now that I'm in it, I just realize the substrate we use is just so much better. Very expensive, but it is so much better. I feel a thick root right there. And I got about 30% of the black dirt off the bottom. Just gonna kind of pull off any more dirt that just kind of comes loose without ripping too many more roots. And there we go. Definitely don't want to get any more aggressive than that. And let's see if I can plant that a little deeper in there. Or do I want to go ahead and put it in one of these other pots I got. Yeah, I think I'll just go ahead and keep it a little bit deeper in there. I did find, found a container I have with some used substrate. Keep that around specifically for things like my seedlings here and stuff. Bunch of spiderwebs all over it, I hope. My chopstick. A little bit lower in the pot, definitely feels a lot more solid now. I think that'll keep it from blowing around so much. Now, this one. Out of all the other ones that I cut, this one I left the three branches on top and then there's like three or four even coming off this one. So it's going to want to go ahead and grow a little more. And this one is also one of the ones that had the most roots coming out of the bottom here. So I don't want to up pot it too much. And there we go. And we'll get that guy right into there now. Sometimes I, I have a way of starting starting some sentences and then not finishing them. My students tell me that. I've had people tell me I do that in my videos too. When you, when you do get something from a nursery and it looks like this, it looks kind of pop down like this, and you're not you know doing our hobby, a lot of people will just kind of pluck it in there. You should try to rough up the roots just a little bit. Sometimes some pots will have, some trees will have a way of never really growing out of that. They'll just keep circling themselves. So you definitely want to try to uncircle it a little bit. But again, like I said, being in the middle of the summer like this, or actually just a few days into the summer like this, I don't want to treat it too roughly. So I'm just going to kind of tease them out just a little bit. Same thing for if you were, you know, say buying a tree and going to put it in the ground. Just want to tease them out and keep them from just kind of being in that habit of circling around and let them grow out some. Boy, these acacia trees have some stinky roots. Still never really have had anybody truly explain why they get such stinky roots. But I think that's good. Like I said, I don't want to rough these up too much. And this would be a perfect candidate for used soil too. Right, hit 
this guy with the American chopsticks. And then now that I have it in there, I'm just taking this and just kind of breaking that little bit of topsoil that was on the top, just kind of into the better substrate there a little bit. And that should work out well for that guy.